Let's build this beautiful Excel dashboard. Man, I love this thing. I can toggle on different KPIs, select different dates, and when I'm all done, I can just take a screenshot and share it with investors. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can build one as well. To start, go ahead and download this infographic right here and this Excel file. Okay, now let's start building this dashboard. I'm gonna create a new tab here, and then I'll flick back to this dashboard to study it some more. Now, you'll notice that I shrunk my columns. This makes it easy to merge cells and control the layout of the design more freely. In this case, we have our columns shrunk to 1.29 as such, and our rows are set to a height of 10.5. So I'll navigate back to my blank tab, then I'm gonna select all cells by hitting Control A. Now I'll use my keyboard shortcut to adjust column width by hitting Alt H O W. You could also do that by hitting this button right here, Format and then Column Width. All right, let's go ahead and set this to 1.29. Now I'll click OK. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the rows. This time I'll hit Alt H O H for the row height. And again, you could have entered that by just right clicking here and clicking row height. I'm gonna set this to 10.5. Great, so I'm gonna set a border around our first KPI box so that it's easier for me to see where exactly we'll be merging cells and editing our design. So I'm gonna select C14 and I'll continue holding this down until I get to N23. Now let's set an outer edge border by tapping Alt, H, B, and then S for all outer edge border over here. Now let me start merging my cells. I'll merge the cells shown in rows C15 to M16, then C18 to M19, then C20 to H21, and I20 to M21. And lastly, C22 to G22, and H22 to M22. Great, so I'm gonna start by merging my first set of cells. And I'll hit Alt, H, M, and then C for Merge and Center. You could also click this button right here for Merge and Center. And I'll go ahead and fast forward as I merge the rest of these cells. Perfect, now I can remove my grid lines by hitting Alt, W, V, and then G. You could also do that by hitting View and then unchecking the grid lines. Okay. Now let's outline where our data is gonna go with plain text before we make it all pretty. So I have my KPI over here, then the value for that KPI, then I have the difference in the value between this period's value and the comparison period's value, followed by the percentage increase or decrease, and then text over here that shows the period I'm comparing it to. So we'll start by just populating all this with dummy values. Now go ahead and fast forward as I do all that. Okay, now let's make it pretty. I'm gonna set these two cells over here to a font size of 16 and bold them. I'll also align to the left. Then these four boxes, I'm gonna make a font size seven. Great, now let's make both of these cells currency formatted with no decimals. So I'll select both of these cells by holding down control, then I'll come over here and I'll just type in currency and then hit enter. Great, now let's round this down to decimal places. I'm gonna do that by hitting Alt H9 and again, Alt H9. Okay, starting to come together. Let me just align left all these cells here as well. Alt H A L, or you can click this button right here. Okay, now let's do the colors. So I'll set this cell over here to my dark blue. Then I'll set these three cells to my dark gray. Then I'll set these two over here to my light gray. Now let's select everything and we'll hit align middle. Great, this is starting to come together. Let's go ahead and remove this border. I'll select this range over here and then I'll hit Alt H B and then N for no border. Let's replace this with a shape. So you can see here that this is actually two shapes. First, we have this box, and then next, we have this shape over here. So let's navigate to the Insert ribbon, then I'll hit the Shapes dropdown, 
and then hit rectangle rounded corners. I'll overlay the shape over my content over here. Then I'll make these corners a little bit less rounded. I'll then make the background transparent by selecting shape fill and hitting no fill. And then I'll make our shape outline a light gray. Let's also reduce the font weight to half. Okay, now I wanna add that pretty top border that we have over here. So to do that, I'm again gonna to go to insert. I'm gonna choose a shape. And this time I'm gonna select this one right here. Rectangle with top corners rounded. So I'll go ahead and put that right there as such. And let's get a lot more zoomed in so that we can make sure that this is aligned properly. Okay, I'm gonna to come to the shape format. And again, I'm gonna change the shape fill to our dark blue. I'll remove the shape outline. And let's see, this looks like it fits pretty well. I'll just adjust it slightly as such. And let's also just shrink this here. Great, now I can zoom out back to 130. And let's just select these two shapes by holding down control. Then I'm gonna to go to shape format and I'm gonna hit group. Perfect, now my entire shape is grouped as such. And we have our first KPI box. Our dashboard is starting to come together but there's just one problem. It's still with dummy data. So to change that, I'm gonna hit view, new window. Now I'm gonna to navigate to the financials tab over here and let's just move these side by side. So here I have my financial data in a dynamic table format and you can see that I have a table name called financials. This is gonna make it really easy to get the information over here into my dashboard. Now to populate my first KPI, there are many formulas that you can use, but for this, I'm gonna use XLOOKUP. So I'll start by typing equals XLOOKUP. And the lookup value is gonna be this KPI over here. And the lookup range is gonna come over here where it says account. So I'll type in my financials table name as such, and I'll hit tab to autocomplete. Then I'll hit an open bracket and I'll go to account. I'll again hit tab and then a close bracket. Now the values that I want is in this 2023 column. So I'll write again, financials, I'll hit tab, open bracket, 2023, and then close. Now let's close our parentheses and look at that. Our value just pulled in as such. Perfect. Now let's copy this formula here and populate it in the comparison value over here. Now I'm gonna change this to 2022 instead of 2023. And I'm also going to make this formula be subtracted from our value over here. So now we're just getting the difference between each year. Perfect, so now I have the dollar difference. Let's go ahead and get the percentage difference. So to do that, I'm gonna take this value and divide it by this value over here. But I'm gonna first wrap it around an if error function just in case I have a zero in my denominator. And if it's a zero in my denominator, I'll just replace it with a zero as such. Okay, now we have an unformatted value. So I can just come in over here and hit the percentage. But I actually wanna take this one step further. See, if the value increased year over year, I wanna show the word increase with an upward triangle, like we have over here. If it decreased, well, I want that to then show in parentheses with the word decrease and a downward triangle. Okay, so we don't actually need this second table anymore because we already figured out all of our formulas. So I'll just go ahead and close that as such. Great. Now I wanna open up the cell dialog box. I have two options for how I could do that. I could press control one, or I can go over here to number and click this little arrow button. Let's now go down to custom. So the way custom formatting works is you'll enter two semicolons. Whatever you have to the left of the first semicolon is what shows if the value is positive. Whatever shows to the left of the second semicolon is how it'll display if it's negative. And then to right is what'll show if the value is zero. What I love about this is the actual cell value will stay a number, so you can use it in your formulas, but the way it shows will include whatever words and symbols you tell it to. So here I'll enter 0% to ensure my number gets shown as a percentage. Then I'll hit space and then quotation marks increase. Then I'll hit another space and now I wanna get that triangle. The way to get that is by holding down Alt and then pressing three and then zero on your keypad. Let's now close the quotations and look at that. It's already starting to populate. Now I'll hit a semicolon and I'll do the same thing, but this time 
putting the zero percentage inside parentheses. Then again, I'll hit a space and I'll write decrease. Now the alt code to get the downward symbol is just one more. So it's gonna be alt and then I'll tap three and one on my keyboard. Then I'll go ahead and close the quotation. Then I'll enter in one more semicolon. Now I'll go ahead and hit okay. And look at that, looks like my value populated. Awesome. Now before we copy this to each and every single cell over here, let's go ahead and enter in data validation. So in order to do that, I'll select here and I'll hit Alt, A, V, and then V again for data validation. You could also go to data and then hit the data validation dropdown as such. I'll go ahead and change this to list. Then I'll hit this little up arrow. I'll go to my financials and I'll select from the account over here. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, if I hit this drop down, you'll be able to see all the different options that I can choose. If I choose a different option, my formula should update as such. And look at that, it does, perfect. I'm gonna also extend this box slightly to the right so that I have just a little bit more breathing room. Okay, now we're ready to duplicate this box seven more times as such. So to do that, I'll select all of the information over here. I'll press Control C, I'll come in right here, and I'll press Control V. And I'll continue doing that for each and every single box. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Great. Now I'm just gonna select this entire range of rows and I'll just paste that as such. Nice, this is starting to come together. And it looks like I have an extra column that I could probably get rid of. So I'm gonna hold down control and select each of these columns. Then I'll press control and minus to delete those columns. All right, now let's go ahead and change our dropdowns. So I'll change this to cost of goods sold. Let's make this gross profit. This one. Okay, now I'm gonna update gross margin to make this over here a percentage. And then for this cell over here, I'm just gonna take this, I'll copy it, and I'll actually populate it right over here. And then I'll just delete this cell as such. This is looking pretty sweet. Now let's wrap up our design by adding a title and a date period. I'll start by adding a title from rows five to 10 by hitting insert and then text box over here. I'll just go ahead and draw that. And we'll call this financial dashboard. Now let me remove the border by saying no outline. Okay, now let's change the font to be Aptos and let's change the font size to be 40. Okay, now let's give this a nice text fill. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and select our yellow. And then for the text outline, I'm gonna select our dark blue as such. Now let's also change the weight of our outline and let's make that a half. And I'll also bold it, perfect. Now the last thing is just to populate the dates over here. As you can see, we have merge cells. So what's merge cells between rows 11 and 12? And again, I could do that by hitting Alt H M C. I actually want that aligned to the left. And here we're just gonna write January, 2023 through December, 2023. Let's go ahead and align this middle and let's make the color our gray as such. Let's actually make that our dark gray. And we'll make that a size 24. And we're done. It's time to send this off to an investor. So I'll select this entire range I'll press Control C. Then I wanna do paste special for this little picture over here. So the keyboard shortcut to get there is by hitting Alt, H for the homed ribbon, V for paste, and then U for picture. Sweet, now I have this picture, I can cut it and put it into an email. And we're done. This KPI dashboard is something that I use in almost every financial report that I send to management, the board of directors, investors, my mom, the mailman, pretty much anyone. What was your favorite part of this dashboard tutorial? Let me know in the comments below so I can make more videos like this. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.